The Qur'an does not say, and the man can beat his wife, just like that. The Qur'an is clearly telling, first of all, that Allah has given the man a responsibility. A responsibility to ensure that his family, his wife, his children are following the straight path. The straight path that leads to Allah. The straight path that leads to paradise and goes away from the hellfire. This is the responsibility the man has been given. Now all of us recognize, for example, that any government, any government has the responsibility to care for its citizens. Is that true or not? Yes? And does not every government have the responsibility to prevent criminal action? Yes or no? Isn't it the responsibility of government to arrest the thieves and the murderers and the rapists? And to do something with them to prevent that happening and to prevent that evil spreading in society? Is that not the duty of government? Yes or no? And don't we all recognize that governments are allowed to use some type of force in order to arrest such people and to prevent them from their harm? Yes or no? Is there one place on the face of this earth, except maybe some little island somewhere, there's only 10 people and they're all related maybe, where you don't have a police force who has to arrest people, who prevents riots, who prevents evil. Is this true or not? You have every country, every place in the world, this exists. Yes or no? Yes. So we recognize that those in authority have the right to use force if they have to, to prevent some evil taking place. What is the problem therefore that Islam has given the head of the household some allowance to use a type of force in order to prevent his family from falling into evil. And that force has conditions on it. And it has prerequisites to it. The first thing the Qur'an mentions, if you, if you perceive some evil, or if you see some evil, this means some evil, some Islamic evil, something that is haram, something that is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah also mentions in the, same, in the same ayat that the believing women, they are obedient to their husbands and they guard in their husband's absence their chastity. So if someone sees that his wife is going astray or his family is going astray, then Allah has given a system of correction to prevent this crime that will lead to something much worse than prison, lead to the hellfire. First, Allah said to the man to admonish the wife. First, you tell her, like you would tell anyone, giving them dawah, with mawu'idha, with a nice exhortation. وَجَدِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ And explain to them in the nicest way. بِالْحِكْمَةِ With wisdom. Oh my wife, don't you see that Allah said this? And don't you see that the Prophet ﷺ said that? And don't you, aren't you afraid of Allah's punishment? And don't you want Allah's reward? And this is the wisdom and the benefit and the reasons behind this that you should do this and this and this. So this is the first stage the, of advising his wife, of exhorting her, of teaching her, of reminding her. If... If this does not work, if this does not work, then he can take another step. And another step is that he turns his back on her in the bedroom. He turns his back on her. Because it is something the wife loves from the husband. That he is affectionate to, towards her, even in the physical sense. It's something that the woman loves from her husband. Actually, if the husband is already like a cold fish to his wife, and only, you know, uh, hardly ever hugs her or kisses her and, you know, they don't even like, even hardly look at each other except, you know, once a month or something like that, then I don't suppose that him turning his back on her is going <laughs> to have much effect, you know. But this is not how the relationship between the husband and the wife should be in Islam. 
We are garments one for the other. The Prophet ﷺ used to play with his wives. He used to joke with them. They used to race with each other. They used to take showers. They take, used to take ghusl together. And him and Aisha would fight to take the water from the bucket. This is Islam. This is how the affection should be between the husband and the wife. The best of you are those who are best to their wives. And I, the Prophet ﷺ said, and the best to their wives. So this is how Islam should be. So if your relationship is like that, then you turn your back on your wife, your wife is going to feel sad. And she, inshallah, she's going to relent to that. Even if this after some time does not work, then the husband is allowed to prevent her from evil, to apply some type of physical force. This is a type of very light beating. In fact, as some scholars mentioned, it is with the, just to hit with the miswak. But Allahu Alam, what we know from the Prophet wasallam is this type of beating is not allowed to leave any type of mark. It is not allowed to break the skin, it is not allowed to break a bone or even leave a mark on the skin. A beating that is that severe is forbidden and this is a type of assault and uh, is haram and a crime in Islam to treat your wife like that. But a type of physical reprimand in order to bring her to goodness is allowed. This is not an excuse for a man to beat his wife. It's not allowed. Just for any reason because you're angry, you're upset because oh the dinner's not ready. What is this? This is not the way. This is not Islam at all. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ hated that people should beat their wives. He did not like that people should beat their wives. In fact, he said, the best of you are not those who...